First off, I wanted to go over the supplies I used to create this piece. Strathmore Bristol, key features are it's smooth Bristol and it's 100 pound. So it's not a toothy paper. When you're scanning your drawing, you'll really notice how toothy the paper is. You might like it toothy like when you're drawing with it and like the look of it, but like after you scan it and then look at it digitally, your inks will be too rough. The pencil I like to use is a Staler lead holder. The lead I use is a 2H lead, which is uh, very light and it erases easy. So I try not to press really hard. The eraser like pretty much like gets it all up. You'll need a couple of erasers. This one is to erase completely, just a plastic eraser. Then you'll need a kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser is very important because it will just take up some of your sketch. It's not messy. Fountain pen. This is a Pilot Falcon with a 14 karat gold tip. I like, I like gold because, for a lot of reasons, but I like gold because it's flexible. It has a nice bounce to it. One compliment that I got on this piece was how thick the blacks are. And the reason the blacks are so thick is because I used this ink, Kurataki Black Ink 60. This was, this is a specialized ink for manga comics that uh, comes out of Japan. I highly recommend it. The problem I found during this piece though with this ink is that this pen gets totally clogged from this ink. So this is the ink that I like to use in this pen. Repeatograph Ultra Draw. It's got a nice viscosity to it. It also has a nice little tip like to refill it. And you won't be able to see the difference because this isn't like really for like fill in. This is for like, you know, just um, your standardized line. And then for uh, the majority of the picture, I inked with this a uh, Pentel brush pen and um, you can refill these. It comes with a uh, plastic cartridge that you can just insert. But after that ink is gone, that's fairly good ink. But after that ink is gone, you can refill it with this. And I found my extra brush pen. So that's what that looks like. So how you refill these Pentel brush pens is with a hypodermic needle. That's for, for inking. For the finer details of the fur, I use a Micron 01 marker. You can get them in different thicknesses, but this one's very, very thin. And uh, it's great for little details, and they actually last a really long time. You know, you can draw several drawings with them before they dry up, and then you just toss them and get another one. And the last tool I used in the inking process was this. Windsor Newton Series 7 number one. You can use a thicker brush if you want, but I like the thin one just because when I get close to the edges and stuff, this is great for, you know, it's still nice and thin and it does like great lines like around the edges. These were the color pencils I used. I brought this set for my wife who loves the color and they were, they worked out really good. Crayolas work great too. They look almost exactly the same. The only thing that's nice about the this a set like this is that you get all the in-between colors. Okay, without further ado, let's start drawing this puppy. I have my reference just off camera of this beautiful Doberman Pinscher. My friend's husband loves this dog. She commissioned me to draw him for their wedding anniversary coming up in a couple of weeks. And I'm doing this all freehand. No, I don't trace anything. Um, I just like to 
look at the reference and, and try to look away from the reference most of the time. Um, just so it has a little bit of my own style to it. I think traced pictures are kind of boring. In comics, I see it a lot. It looks like a trace photograph. And um, I don't personally find it very appealing. You know, I, when I grew up, it was always, you know, how cool could you draw Batman or Voltron on a napkin? When I'm drawing, I like to listen to podcasts. So in the background, I just threw on some podcast audio just to give us something to listen to. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for coming. And he goes on to say we need global depopulation. We'll play a next segment. Now, there is some truth to what he's saying in many ways, and I'll explain that right now, but... Their agenda is total enslavement and no freedom, not just forced depopulation. And their entire system is organized to now carry out this depopulation. And the first groups they hit with the most hardcore weapons was the Western world, who they say consumes the most, so we deserve to be soft-killed. So those idiots in the, aus- in the audience that had to have... Would they still be for depopulation if they knew it was being done to them? Who decides who does this? So, so let me explain the problem with population. People are being taken off the land, they're being herded in the cities, they're being purposely dumbed down, and they're not being taught how to be good, productive humans by design. And so we are producing, particularly in young people, a bunch of lazy TV heads that don't do anything. The globalists are smart. They make you make yourself obsolete. They turn you into a spectator, into a jellyfish, and then you don't have any purpose. Because they want the future. They want the life extension. They want control of the earth. Then they are purposely undermining and undercutting the sustainable carrying capacity of not just humans and our civilization, but the whole planet. They are manipulating the weather. They are cutting off carbon dioxide, that is the life-giving gas on earth, as important or more important than oxygen. They are deliberately creating all this genetic engineering that is wreaking havoc on the environment. They're creating all these new seed lines that don't produce seeds that grow. They are introducing things to the environment on purpose, collapsing the earth. They don't want to just kill humans. They've already had this big destructive project with poison and toxins and all the rest of it, and now they're bringing in something even more destructive. This is a planet-killing machine, whatever's in control of this. That's the reality. And they've been saying since the time of Plato, 2,300 plus years ago, that there's too many people. And they said it under Malthus 300 years ago, and Francis Galton 170 years ago, and Adolf Hitler 80 years ago, and Yuval Harari saying it now. They want you to hate yourself. They want you to decide you're bad just like the Aztecs, and just like the Babylonians, and just like all the other cultures that sacrifice humans. If you go to the archaeological sites all over the world, and they decipher the stone tablets of those cultures, the priest class was always saying, there's too many people, and we've got to decide who's going to die, and we're going to have sacrifices to reduce the population. They just want to be in the position of God. They want to be in the position of who lives and who dies. And now they're externalizing their world depopulation operation. They have articles every day saying, I'm crazy. Nobody wants to depopulate you. Nobody's hurting you with the shots. 5G is good for you. GMO is good for you. Nanotech microplastics are good for you. When all the statistics show it's killing us and causing every neurological and other disorder you can imagine. Liver failure, kidney failure, cancer. Sperm counts down 96% on average in the Western world. Women's eggs fry. We get in radiation chambers to fly through an airport. They're killing us. And we're sitting here watching it. And all these people that serve the system on the left and the right 
go along with it, pretending like they're on the winning team. When you're the Emperor's new clothes, you are the losers. Those of us fighting this are awake, are informed, are educated, and we're starting to really turn the tide. Elon Musk is a trillion percent right when he says if you don't have 2.2 humans to replace a mother and father, you don't even have replacement rate. Isn't it weird how he plays both sides? A lot of people die before they have children. Starships. We need 2.2 people for it takes every all our helium. two people or civilization. Are there a bunch of people living horrible lives in squalor in mega cities around the world? Are there people starving to death? Absolutely. Should they be brought up to speed? Should they be industrialized? Should they be educated? Should they be encouraged to have 2.2 children? And the idiot liberals mm. always go, oh, somebody have 2.2, he's dumb. That means of the average. But that's not being done. Hell out of everybody. And then you get around the globalists, they are a bunch of demonic, sick, sociopathic, sadistic demons. They set all this up to have fun killing people and playing God. Now I'm going to say it again to the idiots and that Bill Maher audience. You're laughing and giggling talking about killing everybody. You didn't realize you're next. You're like a cow in a slaughterhouse laughing watching the other cows get chopped up. You're next, you fool. Unbelievable. A lot of big news today. Stay with us. It's giant populations that allowed us to build this huge infrastructure. We have to replace our numbers just to keep it going, but see, they're cutting off the energy. They're cutting off the food production. They admit they are, and then saying global warming did it, and global warming in the jungles made the coronavirus, the COVID-19. No, they made it in a lab. They purposely collapsed society, then they blame <laughs> us for the collapse of society, and they admit they're collapsing the society. It's not even hidden. The globalists want to get rid of the rest of us. And I'll tell you right now, I can politically look at this, I can historically look at it, I can economically look at it and tell you, God gave us this earth as our providence. We are to be good stewards of it, but we are to go forth and multiply to the stars. And if you want to live under feudalism, if you want to be depopulated and let them have the power to do that, you're crazy. Because this is about mass murder, not about saving the earth. These people say they'll create a thousand Earths once they merge the machines and become a god. They see this Earth as their blood supply to build the new system they're constructing, as, it, as, as, as their placenta. Well, it's our placenta that God gave us. It's not them to decide to act like God. They have two years of lockdowns in the third world, not three, four months, and it causes mass death and starvation. Then they flood us with those third world populations and weaponize the uneducated people. I'm not hating them. I know they're a zombie horde. You know how long I was locked down on movie business? And it's going to get so bad, most people are going to sit back and say, well, I'm glad that virus not even week March, week April, not released, you know, the next more deadly May, virus. June, because July. At least you I was locked down for four people, months. And now we've got electricity. But you're not going to not That's have it. electricity because of the 5 million people. You're not going to have electricity because they're turning the damn power plants off. It's very simple. They cut the resources. It's very simple. The Pentagon in the 60s did a study. I've read it on air. There have been other studies on around the world. But within 10 days of no electricity and no running water and the food runs out, most people resort to homicide. 90 plus percent of people start killing. The other 10% commit suicide. Because they don't want to do bad things. But 90% turn into homicidal maniacs. You know what happens on day 15 and 16 of every study that countries has happened in? What happens on day 15 and 16? Cannibalism. And as a metaphor, the New York Times had a big article last week, or two weeks ago, saying cannibalism's good, there's too many people, we need to get rid of humans. They're getting used to it. Oh, we're going to use bodies of dead people, 20 plus states pass laws, to, 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 to give fertilizer to the crops. 
oh, we're going to kill that old lady and hire 10 teachers. The idea that you kill somebody, you take something from somebody, and that's how you get ahead. That's called barbarism. That's called government and culture by collapse and road warrior destruction. And that's the world they're building. That's just a small part of it, but it's just incredible that we are now living in the middle of this together. And we know what the next phase is, and it is nightmarish to the max. So all these people going along with the leftist woke agenda, everybody following orders and, 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 and following nonsensical logic-killing statements, those are nonsensical and don't make sense on purpose because you've got to go against common sense you got to go against your own instincts and say two men can have a baby, two women can have a baby, two women can have a baby in prison. You've got to go against your common sense and say, oh no, this isn't a recession. And, 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 and be gaslit by these people so that you'll accept the next absurdity and the next absurdity. And, and, and the absurdities are going to get more and more and more deadly. Bill Maher said the ice caps have all melted. The ice caps are bigger than they've ever been recorded. Granted, we've been recording them only for about 100 years. Everything they say is a damn lie. And so you can either realize we're right about this and start fighting it now, or you can do it later when your position is much worse. So everybody pats me on the back, gives me hugs, and says, oh, you're under attack. You're all over the news as the demon of hell. How are you taking it? I knew all this was coming because I knew I was right. And I knew this point would come. I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about all of us together. I love you.
moments of catching my breath at the magnitude of the globe Earth deception. Where is the end of this massive deception? It just goes on and on. I saw a few years ago that the moon landing was a hoax, 9-11, false flags, etc. I can't get away from this. I listen for hours per day and every day look for some of the latest news on the flat Earth. I don't mean that I am in all ways enlightened, but it felt like a huge, brilliant light had been turned on. I am astounded that I have never thought about this before. I am a woman who watched the moon landing on television. I have a master's degree with focus on research and scientific methods, but my background was totally focused on healthcare. I have always had a great curiosity and maybe a little bit of intuition that things did not seem right. I find that my psychological and emotional being is somewhat changed. I feel calmer and feel increased gratitude. I feel increased joy. I am left to wonder about the psychological damage done by holding wrong ideas instituted by the destructive action of deliberate being lied to by those who have the power of life and death over the resident over the residents of the earth. I feel as if I am recovering from this lying violence of the world oligarchy. I am so excited going forward and hope that the benevolence of the universe allows me to live long enough to see the transformation of Earth's people. Thank you again, and I won't mention her name because she asked me she probably doesn't even know. But thank you, thank you for writing that in. I, I thought that was beautiful. And I quite quite often for people that just are, are profoundly hit, uh, not necessarily by, by the stuff that I was doing, but just by the message itself, by the stuff that they're going to they put out there. So with that, uh, let's bring in our guest. His name is Rob Skiba. He is the author of Babylon Rising and the first, uh, I'm sorry, Babylon Rising and the first shall be the last and Archon Invasion, uh, the rise, fall, and return of Nephilim. He's the host of the Revolutionary Radio Project, creator of Seed the Series, and uh, he created one of the best websites you're ever going to check out uh, if you're in Flat Earth, which is called TestingTheGlobe.com. Rob Skiba, thanks for joining us. Hey guys, thanks for having me back. Yeah, yeah, glad to have you back. Yeah, with, with, what we're doing, you know, um, I, I, forget, I forget to mention, sorry Jonathan, uh, not only are you my uh, good friend and personal wingman, but you also have your own show called Perceptions on late Thursday night on this very network. Thursday night, uh, Friday morning. <laughs> my morning, your night. Yeah, yeah, on East Coast, you start at midnight. Uh, which, yeah. West Coast, it's at 9 p.m., but yeah, it's a, it's a great show. We just have Ron on that show. So some of the stuff we're going to talk about, I, I, we're going to try not to repeat too much because a lot of the people that listen to this show also listen to yours. So we will, um, you know, repeat some stuff, but a lot of stuff was just continue, considered a continuation of the last show. Agreed? Sure. No. Cool. So Rob, got a question for you because uh, I, I want to, there's, in fact, I probably should pull up testingthegloob.com and I probably will eventually uh, wait for to break though because uh, as you know Windows 10 and Skype has a, has a known issue and uh, if it dies uh, I'll, I'll be dropped off and Jonathan and you will just have to talk. But um, I, did you get by chance, uh, there's a couple things I want to I ask you topic, topic about. Did you get a chance uh, to, when things were being passed around the internet, to look at Bernard Von Braun's headstone over the last month? Yes. Yeah. Uh, where, uh, wait, let me read. Yeah, yeah, where it had, you know, Bernard Von Braun history uh, was great, you know, he predates NASA. Not only, you know, he was one of the founding members and instrumental in creating NASA, but he, uh, you know, he worked for the, the Nazi war machine back in World War II. And his headstone is, is remarkably small. And there's not much to it. It's not like a, a picture of him holding a rocket over the sky or anything like that. In fact, there's very little cement. It's just a, a really humble headstone. But on it is a single Bible verse, Psalm 19, 1, which I thought was very interesting because it's Psalm 19, what is, you know, what Bible you look up, the King James, says the heavens declare the glory of God. 
statement in which says that. We know the show sets the stage for, yep, we, we did, there's nowhere to go. We, we can't go up, we can't go out. And, and at the very end of that first season, basically, you know, the people on, on the ship were a grand experiment, and this girl starts to manifest some sort of supernatural powers. And through these supernatural powers, uh, one of the astronauts on this alleged spaceship is basically supernaturally transported, like, through a wormhole, warp, or whatever, and ends up, it looks like, on Mars. Yeah. But, but from the beginning of the show to the end of it, the, the, this whole idea of this vaulted dome over us uh, is prohibitive. We can't get out of here that way. Yeah. So the next logical way, then, must be through a portal or some, through some, you know, some sort of interdimensional pathway. Yeah. So, real interesting. I don't know what to make of the Vernon von Braun stuff, at least in his later years, but during his NASA years, I mean, right here, we're right in the middle of the space race, allegedly, you know, with Russia. And uh, he goes down to Antarctica with a bunch of Nat, uh, other Nats, uh, Nazi, uh, I get them mixed up now, Nazi, NASA, NASA, because they're pretty much the end synonymous. Good, good one, yeah. yeah. And these, uh, somebody said NASA stands for uh, Nazi American Space Apes. <laughs> It's appropriate, but I mean, he's down there in Antarctica looking for moon rocks. Now, I'm, I'm saying, oh, wait a minute, we haven't, at least at that point, we hadn't even been to the moon. Uh, so it's not like you can pick up a rock and you know, turn it over and it says made on the moon. It's a, how are you going to know the rock that you're holding? You have no litmus test to prove the rock you have is a moon rock. And yet they're down there collecting moon rocks before we ever allegedly went to it. Yeah, I had heard rumors as well that uh, even before I was delving into this, that the rocks, that that would be a great place to grab rocks because it was such a unique continent. If you were going to fake moon rocks, you, you want to go somewhere where nobody's been to actually get rocks. And uh, that was the place. And it's like, yeah, just dig up on the ice. They're going to be unique compared to just about anything where we are. Uh, it's not like you can grab them. Take them away, and, and that's what I, I like. Joked out last year watching, you know, 
start you down a certain path? And, and have you been kind of up to date on what he's been kind of talking about now since he got back? Well, it's got to be pretty weird for him because he was out of the loop uh, for nine years. And he was totally framed. Uh, a lot of people think it was tax evasion, but they're ill-informed. They don't. That's not the truth. Um, he did a show on Canary Cry Radio, which is what introduced me to you. Uh, these guys over there. Um, so for people who don't know, they should listen to the interview that Canary Cry Radio did with Ken Hovind on the whole issue why he ended up in prison. The guy's in prison for like nine years. <laughs> Thank you. 
basically. I mean, he doesn't use those words, but you know, he what effectively has a snow globe. The, the Quran teaches that. And so, uh, in fact, I've had some people on my YouTube, as well as the comment section on my Test of the Globe, saying, you know, this is all from Islam, and why are you siding with Islam? I'm like, uh, wait a minute, the Bible predates Islam by several hundred years. <laughs> so, um, I, this didn't come from Islam. Now, I Islam, as far as the Quran goes, uh, they call it their word, our Bible is the book. And you know, at least in the earlier sections of the Quran, they, they pay a great deal of respect to the people of the book and the book itself, and highly regard uh, prophets like Moses and others. You know, these are the guys who are describing the snow globe. So, you know, as, as far as the Muslims go, they're, they're Johnny come lately to this as far as religious uh, texts go. Uh, the Bible long predates that. But no, we're not the only ones. Um, there's, there's quite a few guys over there in, um, in the UK and I think in Australia as well uh, out there talking about this stuff. Yeah. Oh, South, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mark. Let, let, me, let me chime in briefly on this. And South Africa, of course, and New Zealand. And, and, but but to, to your point, the um, NASA has always been, the whole, the whole concept of NASA has always been more skeptical outside of the United States. So I think in many ways they would have been way quicker to jump on this. Because it would have it would have validated the, the, the rumors and whispers uh, of what they've been doing for a long time, what they've been saying for a long time. And I'll use the um, uh, the James Bond movie, Sean Connery, one of his later ones, uh, Diamonds for, Are Forever, I think. Yeah. Where um, you know that's all done in the UK, where he's and it and it is not just a little nudge and a wink. It is a blatant slap backhand in the face, where Sean Connery is escaping the bad guys and he's running through a Hollywood movie studio and he's running through a fake movie set. And it's, it's got NASA logos everywhere. And the inside joke, which was great, was they go grab him, right? And the astronauts can't catch him because they have to stay in character. So they're running after him in slow motion. And they can't get to him. But he steals their move bug and runs away. And I thought that was brilliant. So, yeah, I think other countries absolutely. Uh, they even think outside of the United States. So, yeah, I think they'd be way quicker to believe this. Because then why, why would you believe NASA? So, Aaron, sorry, go on. Well, no, not just NASA, but I'm wondering. Well, the reason I asked is because, you know, there's so much turmoil well right now. But does this give whoever discloses it that country a geopolitical uh, advantage over other countries by now saying, okay, well, we discovered it, kind of like Columbus discovering America, so we're told. Um, therefore, we're going to set the rules of engagement or where we go from here. Just a thought. Um, it, 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 would, it would benefit anybody that wasn't the United States, I think, because the United States was, was the one that, uh, that propagated the lie to begin with. Uh, yeah. And if you're going to you're gonna go down that road, uh, the Chinese can't do it, the Japanese can't do it, the European Space Agency can't really do it. Um, it'd have to be, if it was going to be any one country, uh, it'd have to be you know, outside of the, the, the main NATO powers. Maybe, you know, well, I'm, I'm just thinking, what body do we know of that already uses the flat Earth logo that we're supposed to? Oh, uh, I see what you're going, I see what you're doing there. I just got my first one. Did you? Oh, oh, he finally sent it to me. Yeah. Oh, good. I, by the way,
like social media was in place, not just the internet, and not just high speed internet, but social media, because it's instant, and it's addictive, and everybody's in it, you know, I, social media is, is so intertwined, and there's multiple levels of it, it's so, because you want, again, you want to control the message of what's going out there, not judge it, and not just control the message, but control it instantly, go ahead, you yeah, know, and I want to say more for, for Rob, folks, um, you know, Rob, would you agree with me? I'm not here to challenge you know, the Bible to or Christian beliefs. I'm just saying that those of us that do believe or, you know, you, know um, you believe the Bible, really, you don't have to worry either way because you're already doing what you believe. You know what I'm saying? Um, if, the, you know, God appears or the Bible, you know, plays out exactly the way it says it will, then you as a Christian are going to prosper anyway because you are a Christian. But what I'm saying is from a social structure, you see what I'm saying? Like, um, there's other things that I think need to unfold first. And, how do you take care of everybody in that process? I got you. Does that make sense? Am I, well, I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. You might be. <laughs> like, no, if you're a Christian, then you sit back and do nothing. Yeah. Right? And it, and it plays out, and you live by default. Well, it, this is what's interesting, because there's sort of uh, lines are being drawn in the sand here. <clears throat> because, you know, I, I as a Christian, uh, with the very public ministry, um, and talking about Flat Earth, all of the other... But uh, the vast majority of the other guys out there who are aware of who I am, and, uh, and, and I've traveled in some of the same circles these other guys do. You know, I'm the village idiot. Right? I'm the freaking, you know, the freak out there talking about flat Earth. You know, and yeah. and it's like we got to make this guy disappear because he's giving us a bad name. You know, kind of and did they? Right? Uh, so you know, there's all these hit pieces coming out, and blogs, and Facebook posts, and YouTube videos, and all that kind of stuff, where, where these other are out there uh, assaulting mine, you know, and what I'm saying is, and when I said it on John's show the other day, I posted this on Facebook page, like, look, if you're going to say you believe the Bible, if you're going to say you take it literally, then do so, otherwise, don't say that, you know, because all I'm trying to do is do exactly what I have always said, that I believe it, and that I can take it literally, so, you know, I'm just, there was a website out there, and did a blog and said, you know, okay, uh, fundamentalists have the courage of your convictions. Uh, you know, in other words, you're going to say you're a fundamental Bible believing Christian and if you believe it is true, if you're going to take it literally, then do so. Yeah. Yeah, don't make all the excuses for why you're not going to. I, I have a point for John to try to say again. And that is, I, I, I want to ask you, Rob, because I think it's very, very interesting because I grew up with a very similar Christian background and I think, if, and, and if you Angel? Yeah, you want dinner or cereal? to give you a little bit of the rendering I know it's extremely boring so I planned on keeping it to a minimum anyway but I thought I would show you a little bit of my technique for this one I decided to just use the brush it just seemed to give me a nice texture
and some I'll just use pen the one thing I'm trying to avoid not avoid but one thing I decided not to use was cross-hatching just because I didn't want it to have too comic booky of a feel I think I will switch to a .01, even an 005 pen micron, like that. at the end at the very end all right we're getting towards the end of this video and this picture is coming along you can see i'm adding in the fine little hairs with that 01 micron i was really happy with the way this turned out i think it was meant to be because it was going to such a good cause they are a really sweet couple and it's their first wedding anniversary and he is away from this dog right now because the the dog is living with his folks in utah so he misses him a lot so it's something that's going to mean a lot to him and i'm sure he's going to look at it often so i was happy to produce something that doesn't really have any mistakes i you know there were a couple times like where i almost thought i goofed but it really came out smooth so i was very happy with that this is the final bit of detail in the background um, it's supposed to be in perspective, so you should always try to kind of blur your detail in the back so it, it looks like it's going into the distance. This was the final little touches with the micron was on these legs. And then here's me adding a little bit of the color. The, most of the video was of the color was um, not very well aimed so I apologize for that I um, changed my setup a little bit so I could have all the pencils out and um, didn't place the camera replace the camera very well but you can see I'm going from light to dark. That's really the only recommendation I have for you, the use of these pencils. And here's a little example of what I did. Hey, who's next? 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 Hey,
Good job, kid. It's my daughter. She's so cute. I left that in there. And here I am going over the lighter colors with that dark brown. And you'll notice that it doesn't completely cover it. They just kind of mix, which is nice. Once you get used to it. They're very good for mixing. This specialized manga ink has really nice coverage. You still see it's still wet. So here I am with that Windsor Series 7 number one brush and laying down the rest of the inks. You guys made it this far. Thank you so much for coming by. And please join me for the next one. Let me know if you like this long video or you'd rather have something shorter. And I will leave you with my first cut of the trailer for my forthcoming comic, Octogon.